With all the characters and costumes available in Smash Ultimate, it's easy to forget the humble beginnings that the Smash series started with. And with costumes being my specialty, I figured it would be fun to jump back to the very beginning and look at Smash 64's costume origins. So naturally, we're gonna dive into this, starting with Mario. Mario's first color scheme gives him a yellow hat, purple overalls, and green shoes, clearly based off of Wario, the arch rival to Mario. Wario was first introduced in Super Mario Land 2, Six Golden Coins, as the main antagonist, and has been a recurring Mario character to this day. The next color scheme is a brown and beige color. According to the Super Smash Bros. website, this color is based off of Foreman Spike as he appears in the Famicom and NES versions of Wrecking Crew. The color scheme in Smash, however, takes its liberties in rearranging the colors, but the overall theme is still there. Following that is a color scheme with Mario's main colors reversed. Blue for the cap and shirt, red for the overalls. Once again coming from the Smash Bros. website, this color scheme is listed as being based on Mario's appearance in the Famicom and NES versions of Mario Bros. However, again, there were some liberties taken, and Smash went ahead and fully swapped everything rather than just the hat. Finally, we have a green and orange color scheme, which is exclusive to team battles while playing on the green team. This color comes from the box art for Wrecking Crew on both the Famicom and NES, though Smash made the hat green rather than following along with the orange hard hat concept. Next up is fighter number two, Donkey Kong. Donkey Kong's first color scheme gives him all dark gray hair, based on the color that real world gorillas have. Next, we have a color that gives DK really bright, vivid red hair. This comes from Donkey Kong Sprite from the original arcade game. While the Donkey Kong in that game isn't the same Donkey Kong as the one in Smash, this color is a nice reference to Donkey Kong's origins. Donkey Kong's fourth color was designed for use on the blue team during team battles. However, it could have been inspired by an alternate color used in Donkey Kong 64's multiplayer mode, but pushed more towards the blue end than the bluish purple that's found there. The final color scheme drastically changes DK's fur and skin to be all green, with just the tie staying its normal red. This color is based on Donkey Kong's adventures on the original Game Boy in Donkey Kong Land, a Game Boy follow-up to Donkey Kong Country. The original Dot Matrix Game Boy famously has the green tinted screen, so games appear to be varying shades of green and black. Giving this DK color the full green treatment easily makes it look like the all-green sprite from Donkey Kong Land. The next character is Link. This version of Link is based on Adult Link that appeared in The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, though Smash 64 credits him with the original Legend of Zelda and A Link to the Past as well. He wields the Master Sword and the Hylian Shield, both items that are obtained during the events of Ocarina of Time. Link's first costume changes his tunic to red. This comes from the Goron Tunic, a new tunic that Link can either buy or receive as a gift in Goron City in Ocarina of Time. The Goron Tunic protects Link from extreme heat, allowing him to take on the Fire Temple in the heart of Death Mountain. The second costume is another tunic from Ocarina of Time. This blue one is the Zora Tunic, which can also be either purchased or given as a gift. This tunic allows Link to breathe underwater, enabling him to take on the Water Temple. Our final Link tunic turns Link's clothing into a sort of lavender color. According to the Smash 64 website, this tunic color is inspired by the original Legend of Zelda, when Link equips the Blue Ring. The Blue Ring is an item that allows Link to have the amount of damage he would typically take, and it changes his tunic to this same lavender color scheme while in use. Next up, we have Samus. Samus' design in Smash 64 is largely inspired by her portrayal in Super Metroid, the most recent Metroid game at the time, while wearing the Varia suit. Samus' first color gives her a fresh coat of pink on her suit. The Smash 64 website says this color scheme is inspired by the appearance that Samus takes on in Super Metroid when she's upgraded with the Gravity Suit, particularly the appearance of her sprite in-game. Previously, Samus has also appeared all pink when equipped with the missiles in the original Metroid. Then we have a brown color scheme, which as far as I can tell, is Smash original. There are suits later in the Metroid series that have the same appearance as this one, but Smash 64 predates any of those, as there were only three Metroid games out at the time of Smash 64's release. Next up we have a rather unique green one. The Smash website refers to this costume as Mass Produce Samus. This is a reference outside of the Nintendo universe, and instead references the Gundam universe. The line of Zaku mobile suits are mass-produced by the Xeon military and are painted all green. Samus wears a power suit, which could be analogous to a mobile suit, so making this out-of-universe reference is actually fairly clever. Finally, Samus has a purple color scheme. This too references the gravity suit from Super Metroid, except it's based more on the artwork, which is definitely far more purple than the more pink appearance that the sprite has. 
Our next fighter is Yoshi, who first debuted in Super Mario World, but who also had his own games, with Yoshi's Island and Yoshi's Story in the lead-up to Smash 64. Yoshi's design in Smash is largely based on his cameo appearance in Super Mario 64, as this was his first appearance truly in 3D. Each of the colors available for Yoshi are based on colors found in Yoshi's games. First we have a red Yoshi, who first debuted in Super Mario World, with the ability to spit out a shell as a group of fireballs. Next, there's a Cyan Yoshi, first found in Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island as one of the playable Yoshis. The final playable color is Yellow Yoshi, who made its first appearance in Super Mario World as well, with the ability to slam the ground while holding a shell in his mouth. But there are two further Yoshi colors that are exclusive to the Yoshi team, found only in Smash 64's one-player game. The first is this pink Yoshi, which comes from Yoshi's Island. And lastly, we have a deeper blue Yoshi from Super Mario World, who has the ability to grow wings and fly while a shell is in its mouth. Our next fighter is the Puffball Kirby. For his first alternate color, Kirby's body is made all yellow. This color is based on Kibi, the Player 2 character for Kirby's Dream Course, a sort of golfing game for the Super Nintendo. However, Kibi himself has a deeper origin. When designing Kirby's first game, his actual color scheme wasn't so clear. The Game Boy was an all-black and white console, so developers were only looking at a white Kirby. When designing promotional material, Kirby creator Masahiro Sakurai stated that he was pink, while some thought he was actually white, and still others, like Nintendo veteran Shigeru Miyamoto, believed him to be yellow. This yellow Kirby thought was held onto and given to Kibi when a Player 2 character was needed later on, and it made its way into Smash all those years later. The next color scheme is a blue Kirby, which actually requires a little explanation. On the Smash 64 website, blue Kirby is listed as being based on Ice Kirby from Kirby Superstar for the Super Nintendo. However, you'll notice that the color of the feet don't actually match up. Ice Kirby has purple feet, while in Smash, Kirby has dark blue feet. On the Smash website though, the Kirby shown actually does have those purple feet, correctly making it a reference to Ice Kirby. So I'm not fully sure what happened, whether there was some kind of last minute change to Kirby's blue color or what, but the one we actually have in Smash 64 bears more of a resemblance to Freeze Kirby from Kirby's Adventure, or Ice Kirby but from Kirby's Dream Land 2 and 3. Next up, we have a red Kirby color. The Smash site states that this color is based on Fire Kirby from Kirby Superstar, though it seems they cranked up the saturation on this one to make it a deeper red. The final color Kirby has is exclusive for team battles, for use on the green team. Once again, the trusty Smash 64 website tells us that this color is called Kusamochi Kirby. Kusamochi is a Japanese sweet that's typically served in a small green ball form. This bears quite a resemblance to Kirby, so that's why this costume has that name. I'm not sure if the color was made and then they noticed the resemblance, or if they specifically designed it after Kusamochi, but either way, it's very cute. Next up, we have Fox McCloud, leader of Team Star Fox. Fox's first two color schemes are an orange jumpsuit and a purple jumpsuit. On the surface level, these seem to be original color schemes, but there is a chance that there's a bigger reference. During the design phase of Smash 64, the team came up with the concept of having the full Team Star Fox playable, with Falco, Peppy, and Slippy serving as Fox's alternate costumes. Ultimately, this didn't work out for the final game, but it's possible that some of these characters inspired Fox's colors. Falco's jumpsuit is orange, so that color was taken and implemented fully for Fox's orange color. And similarly, Slippy's jumpsuit is blue, so that same same color was given to Fox, and they made his jumpsuit and boots purple to match up. The final color for Fox gives him a black jumpsuit, green jacket, and red boots. This color scheme is directly inspired by Fox's concept art for the very first Star Fox game, though in that concept, Fox's gloves were red rather than his boots. Next up, we have Pikachu, who funnily enough at the time of Smash 64's release was advertised as one of Nintendo's smaller stars, which is really funny with hindsight. Back in those days, Pikachu had a much more squat and round design, so that's reflected here in Smash as well. The first costume gives Pikachu a red party hat and changes up his coloration just a hair. The hat is totally original, just meant to indicate an alternate color, but the alternate coloration is based on Pokemon Stadium. In that game, certain nicknames would give Pokemon altered colorations, and this one makes Pikachu just a hair on the red side, and I really do mean a hair, it's just very, very minor. The next costume is also fully original to Smash, with a regular colored Pikachu wearing a blue party hat. And finally, we have a green party hat, and this one too changes up the color of Pikachu's skin. This is another possible color from Pokemon Stadium, making Pikachu ever so slightly green. It's time to talk about Luigi, Mario's slightly younger brother. Luigi's first color scheme gives him a white cap and shirt, green overalls, and changes up his skin color considerably. 
While many will call this Fire Luigi nowadays, this color scheme actually comes from an earlier appearance. In both Mario Bros. and Super Mario Bros. for the NES, Luigi was a palette swap of Mario's sprite, using this same color scheme. This color and Smash even changed the glove color to match the changed skin color, matching up with this old sprite even further. This original appearance for Luigi would then go on to be the inspiration for Fire Luigi in Super Mario World and onward. The next color is a blue team costume, possibly inspired by Mario's appearance on the box art for the NES version of Mario Bros. And finally, we have a pink and red color scheme. The Smash website refers to this as Strawberry Luigi, and the inspiration for the costume is Luigi's color scheme from Wrecking Crew, where here too he was a palette swap of Mario, but more on the pink side of things. Our next fighter is Ness, the boy from Onet and the main protagonist of Mother 2 or Earthbound. Ness's first color scheme is a black and yellow outfit. The Smash Bros. website lists this as the Hanshin Tiger Fan. The Hanshin Tigers are a Japanese professional baseball team whose team colors are yellow, black, and white, and this Ness outfit bears resemblance to the jerseys. This name was possibly thought up after the design of the costume, however, as it could have possibly been based on the gigantic ant, an enemy from Earthbound who has a similar color scheme. Ness next has a blue, purple, and yellow color scheme. It's often said that this references Ness's younger self he meets while in Magicant, and the blue hat is often used to connect the two. But frankly, I just don't really agree. I feel like this rendition of the color scheme is mostly just an original created for Smash. Finally, we have an orange and green outfit. This could be a callback to Everdread, a character that appears several times during the events of Earthbound. He has a notable orange shirt and green pants, which match up with the colors chosen for Ness here. Next, we move on to the captain himself, Captain Falcon. Captain Falcon ties with Yoshi for having the most costumes in the game at a grand total of six. The first color Captain Falcon has is a mostly gray one with a red helmet. This is inspired by a Japanese commercial for F-Zero X for the N64, where the actor wears an all-gray getup with only the red helmet standing out. Next is a red and purple color scheme, which is inspired by Blood Falcon. Blood Falcon is a clone of Captain Falcon created by Black Shadow using stolen DNA, and he served as Captain Falcon's rival since his debut in F-Zero X. Next, we have Captain Fabulous, a white and pink color scheme. This outfit is inspired by Jody Summer, an F-Zero pilot who first appeared in F-Zero X. Falcon's final two color schemes are exclusive to Team Battle mode. The first is for the green team, a green suit with yellow accents, which doesn't have any reference. Finally, we have a super-saturated blue color scheme. This is based on his appearance in F-Zero X. It's nearly the same as his default color scheme, but the default for Smash is far more on the purple side with regards to his suit. And our final character in Smash 64's roster is, of course, Jigglypuff. Similarly to Pikachu, all of Jigglypuff's color schemes are indicated with headwear, which is totally unique to Smash. Her first color gives her a red bow for the red team. Next up, we have a blue bow for the blue team. This color also vaguely has a blue tint, which is also inspired by Pokemon Stadium's nickname colorations. And finally, we have a green bow for the green team, again with an incredibly subtle coloration based on the Pokemon Stadium nicknames. And I mean it when I say subtle, they're just, they're barely there. And that is going to do it for all of the costumes in Super Smash Bros. on the Nintendo 64. It's really cool to look back on this game after experiencing everything Ultimate has to offer, and really take a look at the humble beginnings that this series had. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed, I will see you guys next time, and please remember to be good to one another.